It's Sunday, March 29th. Uh, no work happening today. So I'll take a day off. Just want to give you a preview of the madness here in my garage. My wife's car, which is normally um, where the TV is hanging. Uh, my uh, SUV, the Cayenne, is parked outside on the side of the street. Actually, on the side of the house. Engine is here. Uh, Valve covers are off, waiting for the timing plates to check the timing to go ahead and put that back together. Transmissions here, looks like I got all the parts to put the clutch back in. The uh, lock tool to lock the camshaft, I'm sorry, to lock the flywheel is in route. I should have that Wednesday. Lovely parts cart. See the GoPro in the corner there. Got some uh, torque wrenches, digital torque wrenches. Over here we got all the um, spare parts, which are going to be new parts actually. Power steering fluid, clutch fluid, water pump, clutch, starter, some uh, fancy ass Porsche grease and sealant. Got the Euro pipe on the ground. On the yeah. on the Secondary air pump on the ground. On the yeah. on the Alternator on the ground. <laughs> the DO 88s are behind that. <laughs> the smaller table is the uh, left side of the engine. It's kind of separated them. Be easier to put back together. Right side of the table is essentially um, right side of the engine or driver's side intake and all of the uh, major components. Underneath the table you'll find the uh, oil tank. Looks like the um, right side turbochargers here. Over here we got the uh, coil packs and plugs. And uh, power steering pump, pulley, and it looks like the uh, coolant pipe that crosses underneath the um, underneath the transmission for the heater.
All right, removing the slave cylinder, two 15 millimeter bolts, one here, one here. That one you got to get at with a wobble or a um, removing the accumulator. The bolt here is a uh, 13 millimeter. You can cap, pop that off with a uh, open end or a ratcheting open end. I'm going to remove all of these lines that come with the accumulator. They just kind of feed through underneath this uh, wiring harness. Okay, so starting to remove the um, clutch accumulator has been removed. This um, sensor here has got to come off before I separate the two. This dust cover is essentially on this um, shaft. I just used a six millimeter bolt that was just sitting on the engine here to pull this shaft off. So now the clutch fork uh, will drop off as soon as I separate the transmission. Went ahead and stuck a paper towel in here just in case I didn't retrieve this thing, but I'm uh, probably gonna replace this as well. Okay, so I guess the next thing is to remove the uh, bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. I've got to also find a way to secure this engine to the cart. All right, I'm going to quickly review the steps for removing the uh, transmission from the engine on a 997.1 turbo. Uh, my engine is out uh, for some coolant repairs. But essentially the steps are going to be the same if your car is, if your engine is intact or not. So um, first step, remove the starter. A couple of bolts here. You can uh, zip tie the starter out of the way or rest it on top of the axle. Uh, next thing you want to do is to uh, remove this inspection cover. And then remove the um, slave cylinder. The slave cylinder has two bolts here, 15 millimeter and a... Uh, 12 here, uh, that bolt just essentially goes through this bracket. Uh, it's a good idea to replace the accumulator, which I'm planning on doing too. So if you do replace that, you can have easy access to this bolt. And then just uh, this will just pull out and stay with the car. Obviously, you'll have to re undo some of the lines to, to get it out of the way. Um, the next thing is the uh, little inspection cover here. I'm sorry, the uh, breather. Take the breather off, which becomes an inspection cover. And uh, if you look in there, you'll see a threaded insert. That's essentially where the clutch fork pin is, which I'll take you over there in one second. Uh, but before that, this is the little clip, screw, and retainer that are inside this uh, bell housing. Now, once you have this out, you got to get yourself a pair of needle nose and remove this plastic cap, which is essentially holding the clutch fork pin from working itself out. So once you have this out, you can essentially grab a six millimeter bolt. Um, that'll go ahead and uh, screw right into the clutch fork pin. And I'll bring you up close here in a second. Let me... All right, so once you have the uh, the pin out with the needle nose, remember you're doing it all this through the bell housing. You can uh, insert that one bolt and then go ahead and pull this pin out. Uh, and then this clutch fork will essentially stay in the transmission housing or bell housing until it either spins and falls off, which they say is normal, or you remove it, then you can just safely take it off and set it aside. Um, the, Throwout bearing is attached to the pressure plate. So, next step is to remove the uh, crank position sensor, which I have just sitting up here. It essentially sits on this little bracket, which is adjustable. That gap is 1.2 millimeters. Then you're going to remove the uh, four bolts that hold the engine to the transmission. They tell you to remove the two bottom ones first, followed by the two tops, and then just go ahead and separate the two uh, components, the engine from the transmission. Here's a 
a look at the inside. I'm going to replace this part here. I can't think of the name right now, but there's a, a bushing or a sleeve in there too that gets replaced and everything gets uh, spline grease and uh, clutch fork grease when you reassemble it. For it. So uh, the ring or the rear the main seal is flared in. So you're gonna have to position it so that it's not rolled. Rolled before you put it in. Top of your head. So I get the rear main seal roughly on right before the rubber starts. I'm just trying to eyeball it so that it's pretty even all the way around. It's a custom tool. This one. Get up here, no yeah. more. Just yeah. do do these parts here. Check it. It's more here. Bring a beauty. about to put the clutch on the flywheels already been bolted on got this uh, fancy t tool here to keep the fly open turning that needed to be there because it was 63 foot-pounds and we're making a centering tool now to center the clutch plate to the pressure plate then we can bolt the two together
check your uh, fork there. Make sure it's good. Okay, looks like um, it looks like the cart's a little high. Bring the cart down just a hair. First attempt of plugging the transmission back to the engine. Got the uh, clutch fork taped on there. Got the guide pin greased up, ready to go. What we can do here. Okay, take three on reattaching the transmission to the engine. I think this cart needs to just go down and let me manhandle it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do another take on uh, getting the transmission remounted. Last time we had this outer uh, collar get mangled, so it's important that these are pressed all the way in uh, because once it fits in here, if these two things aren't perfectly lined up, it'll essentially s smash the uh, plastic collar. Don't know where it is, but I'll I'll take a picture of it. And then the uh, the spline rotation. You can actually grab the end of the shaft, the output shaft of the transmission to get that to line up as you're getting it made. It. I'll try to keep an eye on this thing here. I butter that time. Fourth time's a charm. So it's good. So it's good. I said it's more clearance. I said it's tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 